Thank you everybody for coming. I'm going to try to take you through 60 uh, images in about 35 minutes of the last 25 to 30 years since I've been here. Uh, when people ask me about my work, I always tell them that, that my, my, my work is about number one, a story my, my grandfather told me. Number two, September 11, Hurricane Katrina, and uh, the idea of color in music in terms of uh, a jazz, hip hop, and uh, a rap music, and my relationship with my professors. When I say a story that, that my grandfather told me, when I graduated from high school, I didn't want to go register to vote. And he lived in, in Terry, Arkansas, and every Saturday I would go there to actually, actually see him and take care of him. So he was, 90, he, he was 91 years old, so he kneeled down with his cane and, and he drew on his sand and told me to go stand beside this tree. I did that and I came back and I told him I had this real scary feeling. He told me African Americans had been lynched by their neckties on their way to vote. And this is an image from Star City, Arkansas, which is about uh, 30 miles from where he lived in Terry. And when we look at, at September 11th, that changed our lives forever. Uh, I was supposed to be in New York that day along with Eric Mack. I chose not to go uh, for some particular reason. And while Eric was there and Bill Stevens was there, they, they sent me a picture of a little boy holding a piece of, of, of tar paper and steel. And so what I started doing was using the tar paper and aluminum in my work as my protest against September 11. Then we look at Hurricane K Katrina, it changed our lives. I had a lot of friends and frat brothers that came from uh, a New Orleans that, this, that the storm affected. So I started to map, I started a series of mappings of work where I mapped the storm and where, it, and where it was going. And right now I'm doing a whole series of mapping, which I was so happy to see the Gregor Turk, the show you see now, which is amazing. In this room, we were talking about the idea of mapping. And when I say my, my relationship with my professors at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff as an artist and educator would change my life and got me involved in education. This was my studio at the Arts Exchange. You see a lot of activity. I was there for 22 years. And this is a piece that was part of my graduate thesis show. It's a painting on the Masonite. And uh, to, make a, to make a long story short, um, I, was, um, I was teaching at a boys club at, club in Chicago, and I never heard of a drive-by shooting being from Arkansas. So in order to get the kids um, started each day, I had them to bring in a garment and talk about people who they knew that had been killed in drive-by shooting. And I noticed that all of them actually, actually the, the, their lives defied the laws of gravity. So I did this series of paintings entitled, Have You Checked the Closet? And one brief story is I was hanging a show in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the student center gallery. And the vice president, Johnson Johnson Products, he was down, and he thought that they were actual clothes, and I explained it to him. And to make a long story short, he, he said, I want this wall. He said, no, I want this whole show. I said, sir, if this is a joke, I don't think it's funny. He went upstairs and got his check baker and wrote me out a check for the whole show. This piece is a part of a piece from that same series, which is on exhibit X, X, at, at Southwest. These were garments of people who some of my students knew that were also killed in drive-by shootings, and I, I included the American flag in it as well. This was my first public art piece in City Hall, and, and the mayor just left. I was trying to, maybe trying to give him an idea of where it was and on the fifth, fifth floor. Uh, this was done in, this is a maquette. Before you, get, before you do the larger pieces, you must do a sketch. So I, I did this maquette. And this was a part of my Signs of the Time series. The artist formerly known as Prince did a album called Signs of the Time that, that, was, that was talking about the idea of education, homelessness, and, and age. So this was my, my, my kit. Before I did the piece, I went to City Hall, and I sit down, I noticed there were a lot of businessmen coming in and out of City Hall, so I included them in the piece. Then uh, there was a, a magazine that had that in in the Atlanta public school system, at least 65% of the kids come from public housing, and 65% of them go back into public housing. And they talked about the idea of, of, uh, of one-parent homes. So here's a silhouette of a boy who's looking up at his mother. 
then you have a, and then you have an idea of a book bag. The book bag is empty, so there's no money for education. Then the silhouette of a boy and a girl holding the American flag, symbolizing hope. And this is the piece. The piece is called Sign of the Times, the Daily Agenda. It won the 1990 Urban Design Award for Public Art in the city of Atlanta. And also, I did a, a couple of pieces. I, one of my biggest, one of my biggest, biggest um, clients is Michael Jordan and his, and his ex-wife Juanita. I was, I was doing a lot of research over kids being killed over the tennis shoes and starter jackets. I'm not sure if y'all remember the commercial Bo Knows Baseball, Bo Knows Basketball. My, my installation was Bo, Bo Don't Know This. On the board over there, there are statistics of how many kids were killed over their tennis shoes and starter jackets in California, Houston, and Dallas. So I thought that was a concern that we need to understand that Eric Jordan that made in Taiwan for $10 a pair. And this is a piece that's in the, in the, in the, in the private collection of Mocha GA, and it's called The Choices of a Middle School Child. I was teaching at a middle school and I asked the students to name me um, uh, how many games that they, that they knew of. And the Atlanta Journal Constitution said that, that there, was six, there were 30 and they gave me 60. So as I'm, I'm gonna move forward, uh, in 1994, Atlanta won the 1996 Olympics. And um, I, was with the, I was with the Macintosh Gallery at that time. And they wanted to find a way to welcome the world to Atlanta. So they came up with the idea of doing an essay contest to, to feature the unsung heroes and whoever got the project, they would paint their portraits. And um, Bruce Kirkland knew Louisa McIntosh, who owned the McIntosh Gallery. And they were looking at artists from all over the country. Um, and Louisa gave them my name, but I was capable of executing large scale pieces. So what happened was, I'm afraid of height. So I said, you know, how can I do a 15-story mural and never touch the wall? I did my research on how many days it rained in Atlanta from 1990 to 1994, how many days it snowed, how many days it was over 40 degrees, how many days it was under 60 degrees. I said, if you get an artist to do this project, there's no way they could be hanging from a scaffold 1,500 feet up the ground, painting this mural and get it done by the Olympics. So let me introduce you to a, a, a vinyl. It'll last from seven to 10 years. And I have a, a crew that can put it up. So I got the project. But on the, it's funny because one of the vice presidents kept saying, but can he paint faces? So I made this huge banner that hung in my studio that said, but can he paint faces? And these were some of, the, these were some of, some of my former students who helped me on a project. Uh, they were from, from Tri-Cities High School. And, this, and, these, and these are the portraits. I'm 5'10", so you can see this, the, 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 the scale of them. So what I would do as they, once I finish them, I, I, I would roll them up. They would take them up, up with them with a sketch, and I talked to them, I talked to them by cell phone. So this is the first set of portraits. And every time I did a set, I was off, I was off, off for three months. Then, and this is the second one. And I, I can tell you about it, every person, the hair on their head. Uh, this young lady um, at the top, she was a, a, a Atlanta Falcons cheerleader. She had just had a baby, and she wanted me to make us a, a slimmer. So I took six inches off the nose, six inches off everything else. And that's why, she looked kind of awkward. That's the only person I say that I wasn't happy with, so I did it. And, and this is the fourth phase. Now, this is my best friend. This was Dr. Goldstein. Dr. Goldstein owned the Best Western Hotel in Atlanta, and he was very involved in civil rights. And rather than have separate water fountains, he said that he would not have any in this hotel. So before your face was put on the wall, I would, uh, the, they had to prove their face. So he said to me, he said, you know what? Take the wrinkles out of my neck. I said, fine. So what he did, uh, he gave me a free weekend at his hotel. And, and, and at that time, I was seeing my, I just started seeing my wife. I was traveling around doing, doing visiting artists. So I said, I tell you what, next time I come, next time, I, next time I'm back in town, 
we hang out downtown and you know do and, and just and just enjoy the city. So she picked me up from the airport. We got to the we got to the hotel, and um, uh, I told the lady who I was, and she said, uh, "Well, we don't have a room for you." So then the manager comes out and said, "Kevin, you have the penthouse." So then when when I got up up top and and and, my, and we got to the penthouse. And my wife asked me, well, she was my girlfriend, and she said, well, um, is this where you live? I said, baby, I live like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, the, this is, the, this is the, the actual mural. It took me two years, 17, two years, six months, 17 days, and, uh, 14 hours and 32 minutes. I kept a diary in the process. And this is, this is, uh, this is interesting because Elizabeth Callis, she just, just passed away, and this is at, at the dedication. In, in City Hall, and at the Southwest Art Center, I did, um, uh, this, the other part of the show is there. I was in Iowa doing a visiting artist, and um, being, being from the South, we took the Iowa test. I don't know if y'all took the test from Iowa. And so every Saturday, I would work with a group of, of, of kids, and I asked them to name me. One major African-American female had made major contributions to America. Only one that they could name was Oprah Winfrey. So I had them to do a, a research on, the, on Elizabeth Catholic, Catholic, Catherine Dunham's, Rosa Parks. Inside these time capsules are their research papers. It's called for the sisters who carry the burdens of other sisters. This is a piece that was, uh, when, when I first started dealing with the idea of the tides and African patterns, it wasn't so much about the, about the idea of the lynchings, it was about moving beyond it, and the pieces are now about celebration. So this piece is called Strong Bearing Infinity of the Week. This piece is a piece in the collection of, of Jeff and Savon Hines, and it's called Independent Struggle. It's a, it's a fairly small piece. And this is a piece uh, in the collection of, of Daryl and Daryl and Lisa Walker. It's called, it's called Weathering the Storm. Then I did a series of pieces on the stand, which I called my Jitterbug Band series. And, and they were supposed to be at least 10 feet tall. It just so happened, uh, before I can get the series started, all of them, all of them, all of them were sold. And this is, a, this is my studio at home, in which uh, are detailed pictures in the book, one section, this is the other section. And being an educator, I'm always looking at the idea of educational issues. They're very important to me. So when the idea of the Gina Six came in into play, I wanted to do a piece about it. So, so what I did, I called this piece the new nooses. When you talk about the new nooses, we, we look at sports, we look at, ed, look at education. Um, sports is a billion dollar industry. One out of 88,000 become a professional athlete. So when you, look at, when you look at education, you have the, the one with the book bag and pencils on it, then you have the prison system. I'm not sure if you know that a, a, a large amount of American incomes come from building prisons instead of putting money back into education. And in, also in this past year, the, um, the uh, Alabama Historical Society asked 16 artists to do a piece on the 50th anniversary of the, um, of the Freedom Riders. So what I did was I did these mobiles. I did three different sketches. But I noticed in those nine states, whenever the, wherever the Freedom Riders went, there was also a, 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 a like a aftermath of lynching that would happen. And I started doing, when I was doing my research, I noticed that Florida lynched the most women. Alabama had the, had the most group lynchings. So, I, so on each one of these ties, uh, is documentation of I events that happen, and you have in in, in, Bur in Birmingham, the poor little girls, the, the poor little girls, and you have in each state there were series of events that had 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 to do with lynching. And this is the, I did three different sketches where I was mapping different events that had happened, and you can see though that a lot of the group lynchings happened in Alabama. And uh, in Florida, they lynched the most women. And this is in the collection of, of Larry and September Gray. And this was the other one, which is next door. I did three different sketches. This is a piece where I started to deal with the idea of mapping. It's called the Increased Risk with Emotional Faith. 
and his and his mixed million on wood and the and the and 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 the Smithsonian acquired this for their public collection. Uh, another piece that I collected a lot of the clothes pins and other objects I, I found found it found in New Orleans and I had them cast. This is called before before our opportunity comes comes opposition. This was a piece I did, which was really in 2008 for the election of, um, of our first African-American president. I was with my son and my daughter, and, and so I was explaining them the, the whole idea about, about voting and why it was so important. So in going and going and voting, voting with them, I, I took a picture of my father and my grandfather, and I went in the booth and I said a, a prayer, so I call it Chocolate Covered Dreams. This is Sam Gilliam, this picture, he and I, in 19, 19, 1994, and we had a, a big show in Charlotte. I won a prize. This was Sam and I in 2009. My daughter always said, Daddy, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and so this was a show called Protege, in which I was, I was very uh, happy to be, to be associated with Sam, being an international artist. And the show was dedicated to one of my professors, Terrence Corbin, and we, we both knew him, and he was, he, he was like a father to me. And this was um, Sam's dedication to him. And this was mine called Jacob Ladder, Do Lord Remember Me. The idea of ladders, we all have them in our lives. And, and, when, and when Terrence was making his, his transition, you know, out of all the lives he has changed, he, he said, I'm not a, 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 a very a religious guy, but I'm spiritual. Do Lord remember me. So the idea came about these ladders. Are we all striving to reach a crown despite of what you believe in? It's that whole idea, we all have our ladders to face. This is, a, this is the home of Maria, uh, Maria Campbell. Seldom you find a client that buy the artwork and, and, and make the furniture fit the artwork. This is a show at Southwest. Um, this, is, this was the, the invitation and it's up until the 20th. And it's, it's the early years. When you walk in, that's the right side of the wall. That's the other, that's the back wall as you, as you walk in. That's the, that's the, uh, the left, left wall. And this is the uh, front wall as you walk in. And this, and this is my new studio, thanks to my wife. Uh, um, and I'm excited about it. But out of all the pieces I created, this is my best piece of artwork, <laughs> my son and my daughter. Thank you.